I really like the themes of your campaign. Um, love, compassion, unity, uh, justice. Um, and I actually have a, kind of a hard time squaring those themes with your stance on one thing, and that's a no first use policy for nuclear weapons. Um, so I heard that you had some meetings with folks from the Union of Concerned Scientists, um, and you told them that you do not support a no first use policy. And so what this means is you are not willing to send a signal to the rest of the country, or the rest of the world, I mean, that you are not willing to start a nuclear war, that there is a situation where you would be willing to vaporize an entire city. So I would like to hear from you why you don't support a no first use policy. And if you continue to not support a no first use policy, can you think of a situation where you would be willing to flatten a city full of innocent people that had nothing to do with whatever aggressive act their leaders are perpetrating? So first of all, I love the question. Um, and I want to let you know that the values that I speak, they, they permeate my entire life. I mean, from the food that I eat to uh, what I try to do with my private time, I do think those values are, are I swear to them and try to live consistently. Now, but that said, I don't always, I think fast fashion is something that's oppressing people out there. And I don't know where this guy was <laughs> who had to suffer to, to, to do it. So everything I try to do, I try to, evolved to the point where I'm living with moral consistency. And so war to me is uh, a horrific reality on this planet. And this country is slipping towards a militarism that most Americans don't even know what we're doing and engaging in out there. I, I've been speaking out and fighting on the Senate floor about the situation in Yemen, for example, where we didn't come to a there was no congressional vote about going to war in Yemen, and yet we are refueling Saudi planes, American military planes are refueling Saudi planes, and allowing them to drop American-made bombs to cause a kind of carnage, maybe not vaporization, but tens of thousands of children have died as a result of American involvement in that engagement. And so I, I heard a debate question asked from another candidate about just the military budget, which you cut the military budget, and, and I really wanted to jump in there saying, please answer that question. I don't understand why it wasn't a straight answer of yes, especially because the military industrial complex has so corrupted the finances of our military that if you read the Inspector General reports, it's a tale of horrors about how much money we're spending. It's just fueling the corporate militaristic uh, part of our, of our society, and I'm going to put a stop to that. In fact, John McCain said to me, we could massively reduce military spending and um, capabilities. And so to your direct question, the thought of using a nuclear weapon is almost unimaginable. But I do believe that one of the reasons why uh, in the past we've had success is because of that threat of mutual, mutual uh, nuclear destruction. And I think that these trees that this president is pulling us out of that are leading to ultimately more proliferation is a scary, very bad thing. But I don't know what the attacks we might face, but they might not be a nuclear attack or a nuclear exchange, but within an era where our enemies are designing biological weapons, where they can unleash viruses that can kill millions of people in our country, I, I want to make sure that I'm not taking a, a, a deterrence off the table, uh, just adjective. I know that might not sit, sit, sit squarely with you, we've talked about this more, um, but I'm telling you right now, I, I see no, a situation in which I would unilaterally send a nuclear weapon to somebody, but I do see a situation where the strength of this nation, I will make sure that we have what's in place necessary to deter the kind of actions that can come against our country, some of which we can't even foresee. 